Today we're going to talk about cold form steel shear walls and just a little bit of logistics before we get going. I know we have uh, people deal calling in from several different time zones and so on the left side of the chart I've shown the start time so right now we're in presentation part one I will talk and we'll give the presentation for 30 minutes but just remember any time during the presentation you can type in questions in the little Q&A box over on the right hand side of the screen um, if for any reason at any time you have technical difficulties you can call the number that was up on the screen earlier in the conference 847-991-2700 and they should be able to work you through any problems you've got. At 30 minutes into the presentation we'll have a five minute break then we'll have 10 minutes of question and answer and then repeat everything again for the second part of the presentation and then the third part although at the end we will not have a break we'll just dive straight into the question and answers and then end the webinar. Um, I will probably stay on if we have additional questions uh, and keep answering as much as I can after two hours into the seminar or if you want to you can email me directly at dallen at dsi-engineering.com and if you printed out the uh, the slides or if you have your copy up on your screen uh, the very first and the very last slides have all of my contact information as well as the contact information for SK Gauche. So with that all taken care of let's dive into the seminar. You should have on your screen the learning objectives and I won't go into this in detail, but we'll learn all of this information about shear walls, the proper layout, how to calculate deflection, where it makes sense to use some of the different types of shear walls, uh, do several complete shear wall design examples, and then understand how the loads are transferred through collectors and boundary elements. It's very important that they get to the shear walls, and then learn the proper detailing of the hold downs and the shear transfer at wall floor intersections. So I've got a lot of pictures in the last part of the presentation. Uh, to help you uh, focus and also see how some people have done this in the past on some of these high demand shear walls. So let's get into it. This is a the bottom floor of a typical multi-story structure that might be designed out of light framed walls and have in it light frame shear walls. This is a Hilton Garden Inn and you might recognize a part of this structure. It has out here in the front a uh, one story lobby and that lobby has got, uh, it's, is framed with structural steel, but in the other part, in the areas of the meeting rooms and then the sleeping rooms, it's got um, these rooms along here and these rooms along here. All these walls may turn into load-bearing walls. All of them may turn into shear walls. And then around the outside, you may have some shear walls. Now, quite often, when you're using cold form steel framing, excuse me, yes, you look at different ways to frame the floor. So the floor can frame, be framed from partition wall to partition wall as these cold form joists are done or, or light frame joists are done. And then across the corridor, they may be framed from the corridor wall to corridor wall. So basically going the simple span. Another way to do this is with a, say, a bar joist type system. So it's spanning every other wall, spanning every other wall. And then across the corridor, you can span it with a deck, say a three inch type deck or span it with some sort of joist, say cold form joist. Um, one advantage of this type of system is these walls in between that are not bearing are very good to be the plumbing wall. So oftentimes you have the rooms back to back and all the plumbing could go through this. And you don't have to worry about interfering with the shear walls because if you're using sheathing for shear walls or straps for X-brace shear walls, quite often the plumbers and electricians will say, oh, this is just sheathing, this is just a strap and it's not going to be something structural and they'll, they love to chop those things up with their chop saws. So again, advantages and disadvantages of each one of, of the different types of system. Another issue sometimes with using a joist system, whether it's an open web bar joist or a cold form joist system, is where you have plumbing risers coming up. All, nine times out of ten, it seems like there's going to be a toilet sitting right on top of these joists where they come in. And if you use a deck type system, you don't have to worry as much about that. Um, this is a system using the joist spanning in the opposite direction. So you've got bearing walls on the exterior, bearing walls along the corridor on either side, deck spanning this direction. So all your spans are in this direction, and therefore all the walls that go in this direction are not carrying the load from these floor joists. Also, when you get up the roof, quite typically the roof trusses span from exterior wall to exterior wall or exterior wall to interior wall. So this would keep the loads in line 
with where the roof trusses would be coming down. 